So, Marcus, um, I think you told me that you got into playing rugby league when you were at university in Sheffield. Tell me a little bit more about how you got started. Yeah, so, I mean, probably it was a tiny little bit before that, so I played rugby union growing up, uh, being from a town called Milton Keynes. Wasn't much rugby league to be had, so um, played rugby union, then just went down in the summer and kind of picked up from there, really. Uh, played for the Midlands, and then that was where it kind of happened at Sheffield Eagles Academy at the time. So, they had an academy in the Super League. I was playing there while I was studying my A-levels. And then got offered a second year. So that kind of went in well with studying at the University of Sheffield. So I moved up to Sheffield, uh, studied law at university. Um, had a couple more years in the academy, and, which turned into the reserves. And then, yeah, then after that, um, yeah, that's where I was at Sheffield, basically. Yeah, all good. Uh, you studied law at Sheffield University and you also played uh, for the academy and the reserves at the same time. How was that, juggling those two um, competing interests? Yeah, you know what? It was brilliant. I think... Um, Having that kind of, I guess, like you say, like two identities, I think one of the big things was studying and I, I loved studying. I just found it really interesting. Um, at that time, it wasn't, I wasn't even thinking about working. I was just loving what I was studying. So to have that in the day and then kind of have the physical side of it at night at that time was perfect. Um, yeah, really happy, really happy time in my life. And then you progressed to play for York. Uh, you had a few seasons there. Were you working alongside playing at York? Yeah, so um, after I studied law and then I worked um, for the police. So I was working in criminal intelligence at the police. So again, that was another just um, playing part-time, working full-time. Um, and that was a bit difficult. I think that was a difficult transition from university and um, playing rugby league, which is you have a lot more time. You're around like other people who play sport and stuff. Going into work was a difficult transition. Um, that was a bit harder, yeah, managing that. Uh, but again... Uh, enjoyed it did that for about three years I think that role um, and it, yeah really good really enjoyed it so you're working during the day training on an evening and you just mentioned then you found that transition quite difficult what yeah. was difficult about it well I think yeah so at, at university um, you're very self-led you have a lot of time to go to the gym do your recovery kind of things you go to the pool whereas I think at work it's the first time you interact with people and your priority at work is to do your job and they have I guess a bit less patience around you being a professional athlete. So it's a professional athlete. So you're at work and your your target at work is to get your meet your deadlines, do your things like that, and really put the hours in. And then obviously you're going away and to play, and then you turn up to work the next day. You're knackered. It might even be on a, on a Monday morning where you're playing away on a Sunday. I think that was difficult, um, and especially it was my first job. So I guess anyone's first full time career is going to be difficult. And then moving on, you're now at the Broncos, um, looking forward to a big game tomorrow. Uh, and you've also got a new role. Where, tell me about that. Yeah, so so in between the two roles, I, I changed roles again at York. Um, so I was really interested in kind of the counselling stuff. So I did a, um, a counselling qualification. Uh, I think it was like a level two counselling. I did that and then I got a role um, supporting victims of human trafficking. So I was a youth worker for people who had um, been trafficked into the UK. I found that really, really interesting. So from there, again, decided to, this is when lockdown hit, so I decided to also then study part-time. So at that point, I had kind of three things going on. I was um, playing at York, I was working in that um, support worker role, and then studying for psychology masters part-time. Um, and that was really good. I really enjoyed that. Um, and then from there, yeah, I moved down to London, uh, currently working on a, a project that's all about reducing knife crime. So... We've got um, around 45 young people we support in Milton Keynes um, that have had previous knife offences. And it's kind of trying to get them involved in positive activities, improving their relationship with the police, um, things like that to try and reduce knife crime in Milton Keynes. Outstanding work. Um, do you think there are any benefits to having this dual career? I think I think it's massive. I think being at rugby, I guess you kind of, is one environment. It's quite, I guess, quite like a macho masculine environment. And the camaraderie, which you mentioned in your talk, is brilliant, it's perfect, but I think that's, that's not everything. And I think having a second interest um, and a second thing to spend your time on, I think it's really healthy. I think having that, um, like a mental escape as well, you're not just sat at home thinking about your performance, you can kind of put that to bed and almost be the second person when you're at work, completely different character. You're surrounded with people who don't, might not even know what rugby league is. I think it's humbling. It's just, yeah, I think it's a really positive thing. Sounds like you've had a really interesting journey and you're still on that journey and it's fascinating the work you do. Um, looking back, if you, if you needed to give some advice to a younger Marcus, would you do anything different? What advice might you give to a younger version of yourself? I think, I think for me, definitely in a rugby environment, it's just not to, be, not to be ashamed of your interest, I think. I think if you've got like a really 
niche interest in something and you've got the ability to go, I think just go and study it. Like a lot of a lot of lads might not want to 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 express that. I think in the in the like the macho rugby environment, I think just go out and do it. And it doesn't. I think for the big thing for me is it doesn't have to be to have a job. I think if you're young and you've got the ability to, I think go and study, whether it be an undergraduate degree or just a little online course. I think all of these interests, I think, make you as a person, and it's nothing I'm ashamed of, but definitely, yeah, it makes you better. It makes you it grows you as a person for sure. Because you're a person, as we've learned, it, it's a uh, performance enabler. It, it's been proven it makes you a better player. Uh, there's, there's no negatives to doing that. Massive. And I think I think these people often talk about the benefits of sport in the work environment. And I think it, it goes two ways. There's a lot of benefits in the work environment, which are amazing for rugby. I think you could go into work and you might be having to like host a meeting or call up people and talk in these larger meetings. And I think that develops your public speaking for the rugby environment. I think that did for me. I think I'd probably bit of a quiet and shy player when I first arrived at York and then I just think just working for um, like the police where it's such a high impact kind of role where you need to be confident you need to make decisions I think that really benefited me as an athlete um, so that side of things and I think also when I went on to my other role where I learned a bit about counselling learned a lot about empathy and I guess like kind of being trauma informed and I think that was that was something which helped me support other people in the rugby environment I guess I think now you see a lot of the young lads coming through and they're they're in that thing where they're like a bit nervous around the lads and or you know they might have stuff going or any age of lads might have stuff going on out of rugby and I think having that ability to support them and be that person who knows how to talk is a is a bloody it's a great aspect for someone's in a team yeah it's a great great team role 